RobinReaction.com. In this video, I'm going to go over theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield. So three different concepts that you'll start to learn about when you're doing stoichiometry. And they're all slightly different, so let's just nail down the different definitions. And so first we're going to do this example that's about ice cream cones, and so we're not going to deal with actual chemistry. That's where we're going to learn all the definitions, and then I'll do an example that's one that you would actually get in class. So our question reads, Four cones and six scoops were combined to make two double scoop ice cream cones. What is the theoretical yield, actual yield, and percent yield? All right, so first, let's define the theoretical yield. And so that's how much you would make if conditions were perfect. And one thing I like to tell students is that as you learn all these different yields, usually what your instinct tells you what the yield should be that's theoretical yield. It's as much as you could possibly make if everything went right. And this is usually what students just kind of think of when they think of yield. So let's do the theoretical yield just by looking at our two reagents and seeing how much we could actually make. So that would look like this. All right, so this is our theoretical yield. We, with the reagents that we had, could make up to three ice cream cones. So there was no situation with our four cones and our six scoops where we could make more than three double scoop ice cream cones. The most we could possibly make, if everything went perfect, we'd make this. This is our theoretical yield. All right, so now let's pivot to actual yield. That's how much you actually made, right? All these things kind of sound like what they mean, so that's helpful. So you have to be told this number. There's no way you could guess the actual yield. And so a lot of students are confused about why we ever even learn actual yield. It seems random to them. And so to understand it, you really have to kind of actually be in the lab or understand that when you're getting problems in class, they're often given to you over things that you would see in lab in real life. And so in real life, when you're in the lab, you always lose some of your products. You never achieve your theoretical yield. And so this will happen all sorts of ways. It will happen when you just can't clean all of your products off of the side of the glass you're using, if you drop a little bit, if you make an error measuring, if there's, if sometimes you just run reactions and the reactions just aren't 100%, they just run at 90% and then the other 10% of your reagents just kind of become junk. That's just something that happens. And so actual yield is something that real scientists are really used to dealing with. And so that's why they're going to start including it in problems for people that just started taking chemistry. It just always happens. You never get your perfect goal. You always lose some of your product. And so that's why you have to be told it because it's different every time depending on what happened. And again, it doesn't mean you drop a bunch of it every time. Your actual yield may always be 97%, but in the lab, we're never going to get 100%. All right, so in the problem, it says that we only made two double scoop ice cream cones. So that's our actual yield. They had to tell us. It just says, hey, you only made two. And then percent yield is just a math formula. It's just the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. So we can go ahead and plug in. And so our percent yield for this problem is 66.67%. All right, let's go ahead and now do a problem like you'd see in class. So 27.8 gram of potassium chlorate reacts to create 7.63 grams of oxygen gas. What is the theoretical, actual, and percent yield of oxygen in this reaction? So these are the steps we're always going to follow. Number one, this is super important. So many students make mistakes off this. Make sure your equation is balanced. So going through now we have two potassiums on each side, two chlorines on each side, and six oxygens on each side. So now we're going to convert from grams to moles. So plugging in all the grams that we have, getting our molar masses, potassium chlorate is 122.55 grams per mole, 
and oxygen gas is 32.00 grams per mole. And now we can divide to get the number of moles of both of these guys. So we have 0.227 moles of potassium chlorate and 0.238 moles of oxygen gas. So now using our mole ratio, we can figure out if we had had a perfect reaction, if we had gotten 100%, what would our theoretical yield be? And we need to use the coefficients in our balanced equations to get that. So our ratio is two to three. This just comes from the balanced equation. And now I'm gonna plug in how much we actually had. So we actually had 0.227 mole of potassium chlorate. And so now let's solve algebraically a question mark number of moles of O2. So this is in a perfect world, how much O2 we would have made. So just going ahead and solving algebraically for X, we get 0.3405 mole O2. This is the theoretical yield. And so our actual yield, remember that has to be given to you. Our actual yield is just what we started out with over here. It's 7.63 grams. And so now just a quick note about moles versus grams. You can give the theoretical yield in moles or grams. Both are equally correct, but it's more standard to be asked to give them in grams. Here's the actual yield in moles and grams. And now let's get the theoretical yield in grams since we already have it in moles here. Our theoretical yield is in moles and in grams right here. And now we're ready to go ahead and find the percent yield because we have both the actual and the theoretical yield. So let's go ahead and just plug into an equation. All right, so you can calculate this in grams or in moles. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. And so our percent yield was 70%. We made 70% of what we could have made theoretically. So not that great, not super terrible either. All right, and so now that we've gotten all of our answers, let's go ahead and check for sig figs, which is the last thing we have to do on most chemistry problems. So starting at the top, we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So we are limited by three sig figs. So adjusting all of our numbers, the theoretical yield for the moles of oxygens becomes 0.341. The theoretical grams for oxygen becomes 10.9 grams. We remain 7.63 grams for the actual yield and 0.238 moles for the actual yield. And then our percent yield becomes 70.0. Hope this video explained the three different types of yields you're going to have to know in stoichiometry and happy studying. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And if you go to my website, I have a ton of free practice problems you can check out. And if you need even more help, you can hire me for one-on-one -on -one private tutoring sessions that are online. All right, thanks. That's it. Happy studying.